Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play and earn games on the blockchain, such as Stella Fantasy. And in today's video, what I wanted to do was walk you through my progress in the game after playing for eight days, talk about my journey thus far, and walk through basically our first win through the Dimensional Menace uh, Abyss Rift which is where you can earn the SFTY token rewards in the game. We're gonna walk through how we got to that part of the game, our strategy for taking down that particular Abyss Rift and getting the token rewards with an underpowered team, what it took from a uh, time and an investment in the game to make that happen. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna cover what we've earned in the game after eight days, versus what we've invested, and talk a little bit about the outlook of Stella Fantasy. So I think you might find this video informational here if this type of game is something that you're possibly interested in. And the reason I bring it up is because, you know, I know on this channel we feature a lot of content on Splinterlands, uh, but Splinterlands right now is in kind of a little bit of a holding pattern right now. A lot of people are might be acquiring things, getting ready for land, or acquiring SPS, getting ready for staked SPS changes. And we've got basically possibly an eight-week um, kind of period where there's maybe not a lot going on in Splinterlands right now. And this is, a, I think, a great opportunity to look at a game like Stella Fantasy where it's a fairly new game. It's just actually live here for about two months now, close to that. Um, and it's a new game, and they just made some big announcements. We'll cover it later on in the video here at the 3XP conference today, talking about some big moves. And yeah, st stay tuned. We're going to talk about that topic as well. But going back to the Splinterlands period and why this might make sense to look at, you know, it's, it's a play and earn game. It's a little bit different than Splinterlands, but I think it's pretty robust, pretty mature from a game perspective. There's no lag. There's not really any bugs. It's very well polished. Uh, we'll talk about some concerns I have, though, with terms of service and specifically for United States players that we'll, we'll go into here also during this video. But stick with me. Let me, let me first go into the game here. And what I want to show you is uh, currently the the team that I put together after eight days in the game. And this is the party that we beat the Dimensional Menace uh, Abyss Rift here just earlier this evening. The total power score here is 23,000. We're using um, two soulbound characters that are given to us for free in the game. Lynette here, which is our range magic DPS, and Lapis here, which is our healer. Um, Lynette is, we've got in eight days to max level. Lapis is almost at max level for a soulbound character uh, at four, level 44. We also were able to take advantage of the recent, um, I guess the ability to purchase two additional characters in the game without having to bring crypto into the game. You can actually use PayPal or a credit card to purchase, in this case, Yoru for around $2 for this character. And Rin here is a super rare character, which is just made available today. Uh, and this character is about $14 roughly to purchase with Fiat. So for a total investment here of uh, $16 US, they can use, like I said, through PayPal or through a credit card. You can pick up these two characters, which are both DPS. Uh, Yoru is a melee DPS, and Rin is a magic DPS, range DPS. And uh, I just leveled Rin up today, actually, to level 41. Uh, and we took on Dimensional Menace. And um, so this is after eight days of resource gathering in the game and about $16 of uh, investment, we're able to earn the SFTY token. We'll talk about how we're able to do that and what that's worth and also some of the other ways to earn in this game. What I'm gonna do now is I wanna take you through basically the gear levels of this uh, party that we beat Dimensional Menace with and then we'll go through the walkthrough and strategy of how 
I um, attempted to, to beat this uh, level in the uh, Abyss Rifts here. Let's take a look at the characters for um, our melee DPS here, which is Yoru. Uh, like I said, level 45, which is max level for a Soulbound character. And you can see the gear we have, uncommon weapon, uncommon gloves, and an uncommon helm, all at level 10 for the levels here for that DPS. And for Rin here, for magic range DPS, uh, she's at level 41 in the gear we have here, a level 10 uncommon staff, level 10 uncommon gloves, and a level 10 mage's hat. Uh, our other DPS, which is Lynette here, level 45, the gear here, we have an uncommon staff at level 10, we have no gloves, and just a common hat at level 1. So nothing very special there. And then for our healer, all important healer here, Lapis here, level 44, the gear levels are a level 6 mage's staff, no gloves, and a common hat at level one. So basically what I did is I stacked all my best gear onto my top damage dealers, which in this particular case were Yoru and Rin, the characters that we purchased for a total of $16. And that was a strategy, stack all the damage there. And I'll show you why as I walk through the battle footage here of the Abyss Rift. Let me show you what that mission is here. The Abyss Rift is a game mode in Stella Fantasy. The Dimensional Menace is the particular, um, let's call it a dungeon, or in this case, it's an Abyss Rift. Um, and basically, what you can earn here is uh, through the level one Dimensional Menace, you can earn basically two Stella Fantasy tokens, which is basically the equivalent of SPS in Splinterlands. Now, Stella Fantasy tokens are somewhere around three or four cents each right now, so it's not a ton of value per se of token right now. But those two point sum tokens that we earned today in the game actually has value to further earn character shards and other things in the game. Let me show you what that SFTY token can be used for in the game. Like I said, I just have 2.153 just from completing the mission for the first time today. And you can see here um, things that I could be able to buy uh, right now. This is a lineup that'll renew, I guess, in 10 hours. But in this particular case, I could buy for 14 uh, SFTY tokens in the game. If I didn't want to cash the token out on an exchange for, for fiat or money or other tokens, yeah, I can buy, for example, an SSR doll ticket, which will get you basically a doll, which is like a gear for your character. It's a gotcha, so it's a random draw here um, for that. You can also get character shards here for 11 SFTY tokens for a rare character shard, or 45 SFTY tokens for a Lynette uh, specific, not a random, but an actual Lynette shard for 45 SFTY. So, at the end of the video, we'll talk about how our um, character shard farming is going and what characters are selling from the market. That's going to be where a lot of the earnings are for the NFTs in the game. But let me walk you through the Dimensional Menace battle here. So here we're loading into the Dimensional Menace mission here. And this is just a, a, a boss battle, basically. And it has some like minions or ads here. Basically, what I'm doing here is because I don't have the DPS needed to really um, take on this particular uh, mission, I'm really focusing all of my attacks with Yoru here on the uh, main boss here, uh, the center kind of like plant being here. And I'm just dodging out of the way where possible. I'm ignoring the adds and putting all my damage here on the, the boss because if I don't, uh, I'm going to run out of time because you only have, I think, three minutes to, to beat this boss. So DPS is the key factor here, not necessarily survivability. You can see there I lost my healer right away, which I'm having to go revive her. So this is taking away DPS, valuable time on DPS against the, the boss here. But we're back in here. We're going to try this. 
and see if we can still get it done. Um, and I use here our Stella Strike here, which buffs our damage, just because you know I just want to maximize as much damage as possible onto that center boss. And the reason why I'm controlling in this particular case um, Yoru manually and letting my ranged DPS be controlled by the AI is because I need to really dodge out of the way of some of those attacks. If you let the AI take care of Yoru, uh, she's just going to die because the AI doesn't do a good job of dodging here. So we're still focusing here on the main boss and this is what we're going to do basically is just dodge out of the way as much as possible and focus uh, all of our fire on the main boss, ignoring the adds. Now we ran this mission, uh, I think six times before this and failed, and we learned every time along the way different strategies to, to attack here. For my particular party, again, my limiting factor was the DPS. Uh, it wasn't survivability, I just didn't have enough DPS to beat the boss in the necessary time limit. So what we did here is we just went all out um, my initial strategy was to have Yoru focus on taking out the adds and then, uh, you know, uh, attack the boss and use Stella Strike only during knockdowns um, where the boss wasn't able to attack and was more susceptible to damage. But we had to adapt our strategy here and basically just do every attack at all times on the boss here to. Uh, be able to take it down in the amount of time. So I'll just let the rest of the battle play out, you can watch it, and then we'll talk a little bit uh, more about earnings here in Stella Fantasy. After eight days, what we've earned thus far versus what we've uh, spent. We'll talk about the announcement today at 3XP. That was a very big announcement for the game, which you're going to want to stick around for. And then we'll also chat about one concern I do have for players in the United States currently, which I'm looking to get clarified here from Ring Games, which is the creator of uh, Stella Fantasy. So stay tuned. After the battle, we'll talk about all of that and more. So you could see there, we beat the stage, where actually time was up, we were taking damage at the end and we just got the kill in just in time. You can see the damage there, Rin did the most damage, Lynette did the second most, and Nyoru uh, did the third most. And here are our rewards, and there we go, we got our 2.153 Stella Fantasy Tokens. So what this video shows is that after basically $16 of investment here and about eight days of playing the game, we're able to earn uh, in the game not only the uh, Stella Fantasy token as part of the Dimensional Menace, which we can do daily now to earn that, um, but we also have been able to, if I go to the uh, Unique Abyss here, the Abyss Rifts, um, what we can also do is we can uh, beat the other mission here. Yesterday's friend is today's foe. And this is a, a mission where we can earn character shards as well. And character shards are probably the best way to earn right now in Stella Fantasy. And specifically, if we look at what we've earned in eight days of battling, we've actually been able to beat uh, that uh, shard uh, abyss rift twice so far. And you can see here, what we've been able to do is earn two SSR shards. Um, here, SSRs will take 180 shards to get a random there. We've gotten 10 SR shards, so we're about uh, one-eighth of the way through, maybe one-tenth, I guess, uh, through getting a random SR character, which is an NFT. We've got 30 rare shards. We're about 30% through unlocking a rare random rare nft and we also got one kuru ssr shard here we would need 49 more of those to unlock kuru now you might be saying well that's not much progress for eight days you know you still have to play a lot more to unlock these characters well the thing that you have to re recognize with stella fantasy is you have to recognize what the value of those characters are currently in the market to see you know, if this would make sense to play as a play and earn game. But also you have to recognize that I've only put $16 into the game. Now, 
if I wanted to whale out and I had you know money, maybe I put in you know more money, and then day one I'm earning these shards, and also maybe earning higher levels if I invested in better characters. Remember, I'm using two starter characters and basically farmed starter gear here as well as you know i just picked up those two characters for 16 dollars so as you go through the abyss rifts uh, there are higher levels here of this mission here which you earn more shards which is level two and also dimensional menace level two you earn more uh stella fantasy um uh tokens it's just like splinterlands just like champion league uh, rewards are much higher in Splinterlands than bronze level rewards. I'm basically getting bronze level entry level rewards in Stella Fantasy. Had I invested more or had I more assets in the game or advanced assets, I could earn more. So just keep that in mind. I'm just showing you what I've been able to do just for like a $16 investment at this point in time. Let me show you the market because I think that's gonna help answer some questions that you may be wondering, is this worth it for you? So here we are in the Stella Fantasy marketplace here where you can buy uh, not only the characters but also the gear uh, pieces as you craft them. If you don't want to use them anymore, you can craft them and sell them here. Uh, you can see here a rare pure piece of gear for like an axe is selling for about 0 0.059, basically 0 0.05. BNB. BNB, let's say, is somewhere ranging between 250 and 300 So that's roughly at the high, you know, $300 price range of BNB. It's roughly $18 to buy or to sell a rare uh, weapon here. You can see if we were to craft higher level gear, like an SR piece of gear is selling anywhere between 0.35 to 0.43. BNB, and there's only three pieces of SR gear available for sale on the market right now, and there's um, zero pieces of SSR gear right now. So that's the gear prices. Let me show you the characters. We talked about the shards and how to earn character shards. Right now, if we look at the lowest priced rare characters, the lowest priced rare character is selling for basically 0.08. BNB if you wanted to buy or to sell that in this case it's Elena so if you were to let's say I'm one third of the way through after eight days of getting like a card like Elena here the floor price here roughly is let's say 20 to 24 dollars depending on the price of BNB on a given day for a rare character so basically after eight days you know, I've just got to the stage where I can earn those shards so maybe in another week or so uh, I might be able to get my first rare character. So after maybe two weeks or so in the game, you know, earning roughly twenty to twenty-four dollars if I were to sell that character, you know, that's not bad for a bronze type of earnings level in uh, Stella Fantasy. If we were to compare that to Splinterlands, and again here. If you look at SR floors for SR characters, you have to ignore these awakening counts. These awakened characters are basically just discarded and used basically only for staking on land. They're not really used for battling, so you can't look at those as a floor price. You have to look at the uh, basically a, a clean version of this, and that would be here, this Alfina. So it looks like the floor right now for a brand new SR random character at level 1 that hasn't been awakened uh, is 0.33 BNB. So that means, let's just say BNB is around $300. That means this card is basically $100 in value if you were to either sell it or to buy it. Uh, and again, you know, you can earn that, those shards in the game. So that's kind of a heads up on that value. And that SSR here, SSR shards will take a while. Again, I think I only have two out of 180. Again, if you look at the floor here of uh, the SSRs, right now it's 4.2 BNB. So these are not uh, cheap. Uh, that's about, well, it's over $1,200 roughly, depending on the price of BNB. And if we look, I do have one crew shard. You saw one out of 50 uh, crew here. If we look at a crew that's for sale, uh, there's only one on the market and it's 8.9 BNB, so almost 9 BNB, so that's roughly $2,700. Um, so that's 1 50th of 
I guess, $2,700 basically is what that shard would be worth if you could sell it, which you can't. You have to basically get 50 of them to unlock the character. So that gives you an idea a little bit about the earnings potential in the game at the bronze or basic $16 investment level. Um, just some time, and, uh, you know, obviously eight days of playing, not nonstop, but just eight days of in the game playing here and there. Uh, that's what you can earn thus far. Um, just want to give this as a kind of gauge uh, for the play and earn aspects of the game. Now I want to talk about two remaining topics for this video. One is the announcement that the Stella Fantasy team made earlier today at 3XP. Specifically here, you can see, um, if I go back to Stella Fantasy's Twitter, they announced um, today, uh, let's see if I can find it. Yes, that's right here. Uh, they announced today that they're going to be launching the game on Steam this summer uh, in the Steam market. And they're also going to be having a mobile version of this game available before the end of the year. So right now it's playable on PC, but it'll be mobile enabled by the end of the year and Steam here this summer. So those big, big news. I do have one concern that I'm trying to get answered uh, through the, the Discord for Stella Fantasy, and that is the terms of service for Stella Fantasy, if you actually drill down into the legal terms of service, um, does say that the United States is a restricted area for playing Stella Fantasy. Uh, I'm trying to get clarification on why they would put that in the terms of service, um, because obviously you saw that they're marketing here at 3XP. They're doing videos with crypto stash they're marketing certainly towards the american market uh going on steam as well so i'm not really sure um, what the disconnect there is as i learn more about that i'll certainly report on it here on youtube but i wanted to just put that out there as a caveat i don't have an answer on what that means so if you were to put any money into stella fantasy and you live in the united states just be aware of that do your own research, not financial advice, all that good stuff. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos on this game. And until next time, keep stacking those stats.